Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. This is Chapter 6, Periodic Table and Periodic Law. This is video part 2. In this video, we're going to be looking at the period and group trends of several properties of the elements. And then we're going to relate the period and group trends to atomic radii and electron configuration. Okay, so atomic radius, how do you measure it? Well, when you have elements that occur as molecules, you look at half the distance between the nuclei when we're looking at identical atoms. And I, I just want to point out here with this picture below, there's actually two types of atoms. There's metallic and non-metal. So notice with the metallic, they don't necessarily overlap, but they are almost um, atom to atom. And as a result of it, we look at half the distance between the nuclei. And then here, um, with the nonmetal, we do have overlapping atoms. And as a result of it, we look at half the distance uh, between those nuclei. OK, so what we notice is there is a general decrease in the atomic radii when you go from left to right. And it makes sense because you're increasing the number of protons in the nucleus, and as a result, the electrons are attracted to that increasing positive charge. Now, the valence electrons are not shielded from the increasing nuclear charge because there's no electrons that are coming between the nucleus and the outside electrons. Okay, the reason why I show you this picture is I just want to show you some of the general trends with atomic radii. So like I said, as you go from left to right, the atomic radii does decrease. Notice you start out with 152 for lithium and then you end up with 71 for neon. So as you increase the number of protons in that nucleus, the outer electrons or the valence electrons are strongly attracted to that positive charge. Now, when you go down a group, notice that the atomic radii actually increases. So you go from 152 to 265. And that makes sense because you're adding more energy levels. So therefore, the, the atom is getting bigger. OK, ion. What is an ion? When ion typically is a element that has either excess or it's lacking electrons. So as a result, it's a positive overall or a negative overall. Now, <clears throat> please note when elements lose electrons, they tend to have um, a positive charge and they become smaller as a result of it. Now, why does this happen? Because if you have a loss of electrons, you have an empty outer orbital. And as a result of it, it gets smaller. So when you remove the electrons, it tends to get smaller. In addition to that, um, there's actually some repulsion between electrons because they're the same charge. And that repulsion actually gets smaller. So as a result, the electrons get closer to the nucleus. Now, this is really important, and this sometimes is difficult for students to understand. When, when electrons are gained, the opposite happens. So if we add electrons to a um, element, it actually becomes larger. And as a result of that, if you're adding electrons, they're not liking the fact that they're the same charge, so they kind of push at each other, and as a result, the element gets bigger. So what I would do is I would definitely keep this picture in mind when you're talking about ions. Notice that the atom on the left, sodium, it loses an electron. As a result, it gets smaller. And here, we've gained an electron, and as a result, it got bigger. Okay, So if you have a positive ion, it's going to be smaller than the original element. If it's a negative ion, it's going to be bigger than the original element. OK, so ionic radii for positive ions decrease left to right. And negative ions decrease from left to right. So these are a couple generalized trends.
that you probably need to know. So positive ions decrease and negative ions actually get smaller as you add electrons. Okay, ionization energy. What is ionization energy? It's the amount of energy to remove an electron for an atom that's in the gaseous state. So the energy required moving the first electron, we call it first ionization energy. Now I want to point out this um, graph to you because this is pretty important and you'll see it again. So I'm going to circle these elements here. Notice that they're at the bottom of each um, trend, I guess you could say. These are all alkali metals. They only have one valence electron, so because of that, it's, it's fine for them to lose that outer electron. They actually prefer it, and um, as a result, their energies are lower. However, if you go to these elements up here, so helium, neon, argon, these are all noble gases. So they are not happy with losing their outer electron. And the reason why is they already have eight outer electrons. And there's what we call the octet rule. So if they have eight electrons, they don't want to lose that last electron because they are more satisfied having that eighth electron. So as a result, removing that last electron is very hard and therefore requires a lot of energy. Okay, so in addition to that, we can remove two electrons. And please remember, every time you try to remove an additional electron, you're going to have higher energy. And we call this second ionization energy. So each energy or each removal of another additional electron requires more energy. But you're going to notice that it goes up and down depending on um, how many electrons you're removing. Okay, so uh, the last trend is electronegativity. Electronegativity is the ability of an element to attract electrons for a chemical bond. So please note that when we're looking at electronegativity, we're actually decreasing the amount of energy when you go down a group. And electronegativity actually increases when you go left to right across a period. What does this mean? Um, this picture is actually very good for understanding um, electronegativity. Please note that fluorine has the highest electronegativity, and this is in Pauling's. This is named after a chemist by the name of Linus Pauling. Um, fluorine is one step away from becoming like neon. It only has seven valence electrons, and as a result of it, it will steal electrons from any um, element that is near it. It'll even steal, or it'll share an electron with another fluorine just so it has access to that eighth electron. Now if we go over here, francium. Francium has one of the lowest uh, electronegativities and um, it only has one valence electron. So it's not necessarily holding very tightly on that, that last valence electron. Now if we were to take an arrow and draw all the way up to fluorine, this is the general trend of electronegativity. So it increases going from the bottom all the way up to the upper right. And um, please note that the noble gases, they already have eight electrons in their valence shell. So they don't necessarily need any more electrons, and as a result, they don't have electronegativity. Okay, so in conclusion, atomic and ionic radii decrease when you're going left to right across a row, and they actually increase when you go down a group. Ionization energies increase from left to right across a period, and they actually decrease when you move down a group. The octet rule, and this is something we'll go over and over each time. The octet rule, they will either gain, lose, or share electrons to get eight electrons in their outer orbit. And then lastly, electronegativity, the um, increase is typically left to right across a period, and it actually goes down when you go down a group.